<laughs> Five years ago is the last time I released one of my What If Blank Was a Pokemon Region videos. For those unfamiliar, in those videos I'd look at different countries and places around the world and make Pokemon regions based on them. There'd be new Pokemon ideas based on the local wildlife and folklore, town and drought concepts based on the real life geography, and a story that generally tried to reflect something from the place's history or culture. Today, I want to return to my regional videos, but with a slightly different format. These aren't going to be as heavily edited or produced as my original regions were, and I'm also not going to commission as much new art or assets for my ideas. As much as I'd love to do regions like I used to, I just don't have the time or budget to make them as big as they were, so I'll be trying this new video style today and seeing how it goes. Getting into today's actual topic, the region we'll be looking at isn't based on somewhere from real life, but instead we'll be talking about the fictional land of Hyrule from the Legend of Zelda franchise. In this video, we'll be going through some Pokemon concepts based on the many monsters, creatures, and fantastical things found all throughout the Zelda series. Starters, variants, and legendaries abound, here's a look at some Pokemon ideas for a Hyrule-based region. The beauty of Hyrule, and really the Legend of Zelda series as a whole, is that it's a very diverse fantasy world. One second it can be silly and whimsical while you're throwing a little plant man off a cliff, and the next it can be incredibly serious with its fantasy tropes and grand villains. There's a wide variety of not just monsters to pull inspiration from, but creatures and fantasy ideas as a whole in Hyrule, and making new Pokemon ideas for this region was actually pretty straightforward. Starting with the starters, I really like the idea that each of the three starters would represent one of the pieces of the Triforce. Courage, Wisdom, and Power. For those not in the know, the Triforce is a holy artifact in the Zelda series that represents balance in all things. Each of the three pieces are associated with a prominent character, Link with Courage, Zelda with Wisdom, Ganon with Power, and it's appeared in most Zelda games as a core plot point. As I said, I like the idea of the Triforce being tied to a Hyrule region starters and also reflecting the character that holds said piece. The grass starter, for instance, would be a Clydesdale horse inspired by Link's iconic horse, Epona. It would be a dual grass fairy type, which is also a nod to the Kokiri Forest and Link's affinity with fairies, and it would have a special ability called Courageous Heart, which would boost the Pokemon's speed when its health falls beneath half. For the Fire-type starter, I think a pig embodying power would be perfect. Pokemon's already done that concept, so to make it a bit more distinct, it would be a Fire-Dark type with its design being a big love letter to Ganon's ultimate pig form. It would be wild and malicious in nature, with its ability Powerful Heart further accentuating its aggressive personality by boosting its attack when its health falls beneath half. The Water Starter would loosely be based on a Loftwing, the flying companion seen in Skyward Sword. These creatures are specifically based on Shoebell Storks, and in-game are said to have a special connection to the goddess Hylia, who in turn is an ancestor to Zelda. It will be a water flying type the entirety of its evolution line and have the ability Wisdom Heart, which would restore the Pokemon's health to max one time when its HP falls beneath half. Outside of the region starters, there exists a plethora of other Pokemon inspired by the vast array of creatures found in Hyrule. One that you would encounter in the first route would be a Pokemon based on a Deku Scrub. The Deku are a race of plant people that take on a few different incarnations throughout the series. For this game, I imagine you'd find a Pokemon inspired by a Deku Seed, and then it would have a split evolution. On one hand, it could evolve into a grass dark type and reference the carnivorous Deku Baba enemies, while on the other, it would become more reminiscent of a Deku scrub and fire off ranged attacks by spitting seeds. Within Hyrule, there exists a species of fish-like people. They're called the Zora, and over the years we've seen two different kinds of them. There are what's known as River Zora, which are a bit more monstrous and fish-like, and there are Common or Lake Zora, which are more human-like in both appearance and mannerisms. I think that having not just a Pokemon to represent these fishy friends would be ideal, but it would be cool if there were different variants of the Mon depending on where you find it in the region, much like Gastrodon. Both versions would be pure water types, but differ in their stats and abilities. In the rivers and bogs, you would find a Pokemon based on the River Zora who would have higher special stats and the Torrent ability, while in the lakes and ocean of the region, you would see the Lake Zora Pokemon who would have higher physical stats and Water Absorb. 
To round out the common Pokemon based on major factions in Ocarina of Time Trio, we have a Fakemon based on the Gorons. Gorons are very hardy rock monsters seen in the mountains of most Zelda games. They can roll up into a ball and tear through anything, and outside of that, they are incredibly strong and do all kinds of rigorous physical training. For a Pokemon based on these guys, I think Fighting Rock or even Fighting Ground type is a lock with an ability of Sturdy to show just how resilient they are. Next up is a Pokemon based on an Octorok. Octoroks are a classic enemy that have appeared since the original Zelda, and as their name implies, they are octopi that shoot rocks. There have been numerous variants throughout the series, with some living in trees or water, but for this region, I think we'll keep it pretty basic and have it just be a normal rock type that you find scurrying about the early routes. Mechanical Pokemon are always neat, and Zelda has some great inspiration for a line of robots based on Skyward Swords aptly named Ancient Robots. These would be rock electric types that have magical time stones embedded in them that have kept them alive and functioning for thousands of years. Having a special mover ability that's tied to the time stones would be perfect, and an idea I had for one was called Time Dilation, which lowers the opponent's speed when this Pokemon enters battle. Every Pokemon game needs a species that the designated evil team of the region can use, and for Hyrule, I think a three-stage based on Bokoblins slash Moblins is a no-brainer. These are monstrous goblin ogre type enemies seen in many versions of Hyrule, and for Pokemon, we would definitely make them a bit cuter to fit the overall aesthetic. That's not to say they wouldn't still be wild, however, as they are dark types that prefer the more rugged areas of the land. A single-stage Pokémon that would be found in numerous places would be a gelatinous slime inspired by the Choo Choo. Its entire gimmick would be that depending on where you find it, it would have a different typing, much like how Zelda Choo Choo's come in all sorts of elements. You could find water, fire, electric, or even ice-type versions of this Pokémon and catch whichever one gels best with your team. To close out the common Pokemon section, we have a few regional variants of existing Pokemon to go over. The first is a Pikachu variant based on a Bombchu, and yes, this idea was born purely from the similarities between their names. This Pikachu would be an electric fire type and have explosive moves like self-destruct baked right into its moveset, as well as Aftermath as an ability to emphasize how it explodes when you defeat one. The final variants we have are a version of Bronzor and Bronzong based on the Mirror of Twilight, which is a legendary artifact that links the regular world and the world of Twilight. It's worth noting that these variants would both become Psychic Dark type, but their dark typing doesn't denote their malevolence, but instead their ties to the Twilight Realm. This is even reflected with their new ability Twilight Veil, which adds a secondary dark type effect to all of the Pokémon's psychic moves. To wrap up this video, let's talk about some legendaries. There's tons of bosses, gods, and deities all throughout Zelda that would make great legendary Pokémon, and it was pretty hard to whittle that list down to something presentable. What I ended up doing was a little bit of a twist on the concept, so we'll see if you guys like what I did. For the three main legendaries in this game, something a bit unorthodox would happen. Your starter Pokémon would actually have a special god form you can unlock by having them hold a Triforce-inspired item. This would act as almost like a mega evolution for your starter, but ascend it to legendary levels in strength and abilities. Their typings would all remain the same, but their abilities would be upgraded into true versions of their Triforce piece, with some abilities becoming entirely brand new. The Grass Starter would get an ability that increases its speed and attack when its health is below half while also making it resist any kind of flinching. The Fire Starter would have an ability that raises all of its stats upon entering battle, but at the cost of making it take chip damage every turn. And the Water Starter would be able to negate any kind of accuracy loss while also protecting itself from the Confusion status effect. Aside from these three legendary Pokémon, and you can definitely see my budget constraints kicking in here now, I have to imagine that a Majora's Mask legendary or mythical would be a perfectly creepy idea for the region. Its whole concept and storyline could revolve around how it possesses other Pokémon and infects them with not only a partial dark typing, but an immense power. I think storyline-wise you would chase it as you fight forms of Pokémon that have been taken over by the Eldritch Mask, until you finally confront its true form at the end, which is pure Dark-type. And that's the end of the first part of my What If Hyrule Was a Pokemon Region video series. We looked at some of the awesome Pokemon ideas that could be born from the world of Zelda, and whenever part two comes out, we'll be taking a look at what the region itself, story, and gameplay mechanics could be like. 
Thanks so much for watching and please share your own ideas in the comments section below. If there is a Zelda enemy you think would be perfect for a Pokemon, or maybe you don't like how I portrayed something, let me know in the comments. Thanks again so much for watching, let me know what you thought of this new style of regional video, and I'll catch you guys later.